Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. We get a lot of questions from people on proper room size and dimensions and volume and what is a good room size to have, what is not a good room size to have. So today we're going to talk about some good uh, room ratios and at the end of the video I'm going to give you a graphic on a nice uh, room size to look at when you're considering rooms. Um, obviously, usage has a big part in it. Live room is different than control. Even control and, and mastering are different. So usage has a big uh, impact on, on room size and volume. But let's just uh, work today on, on some general concepts and ideas so you can kind of get an understanding of what is a good room size and what isn't for your particular usage. One of the engineers that's quite famous for his studies in uh, room modes and, and unwanted pressure issues in room is, a, is an engineer named Bonella from Buenos Aires and he came up with this Bonella graph and basically it's a, a graph of, of different ratios that you can use uh, and, and apply your um, room size that you have to work with to this graph and see how it fits and if it fits within a criteria then you'll be able to uh, see if it's, a, if it's a good fit. I'll give you a graphic of that at the end of the video. Basically, it, it divides the low end of a room and, and different uh, room sizes and volumes. And it looks at everything less than 200 cycles because you know from my past videos that I'm a real stickler about the 200 hertz and below and 200 cycles and above because the wavelengths in today's rooms, we have to allow for this 200 cycle and below wave. So what he did was he looked at the low end and he divided it into one-third octave bands. And why did he do that? Because one-third octave bands is how we hear. This is human hearing processing. So I know we use one, one twenty-fourth and one twelfth in our analysis when we look at things, but for human hearing, the one-third octave is, is what he used and it, it, it works well for, for this process. What did he do? He looked at the number of modes that were below 200 cycles in a whole series of width, height, and length dimensions. And he came up with this graph that uh, allowed these modes to be separated by 10 hertz increments or higher. So he, he came up with a, a way of, of looking at room sizes and room ratios and proportions where the room modal structure was 10, 10 hertz apart. He calculated that 10 hertz was a nice spread between the modes to not cause so many audible differences in, in uh, the presentation of the signal in the room. And what did Benella try and do with, with all this information below 200 cycles that he discovered and the room mode spacing of 10 hertz apart? Well, he, he, he discovered that each one-third octave band should have more modes than the preceding one to minimize audio or audible distortions within the room. So he discovered more, more modes than the preceding mode when you look at the analysis, or at least the same number of modes than the preceding one. So these are criteria that he used to evaluate and come up with this uh, general guideline that, that we're going to use. Is this the end, and is this the final way to do things? No, because it depends on room usage and pressure levels and things like that. But it's a great start, and I think this will help you kind of decide um, wh where your room fits into to this situation. Modal coincidences are not tolerated. What's a modal coincidence? When you have a dimension, a height, or a width, or a length that's the same. And, and when, when you send your room dimensions in to me, I see a lot of dimensions that are the same. Well, this is called a coincidence. When you, hear, when you see that, when I respond to that to you, you know that that's not even a criteria that an evaluator who came up with a formula, namely Bonella, for determining room ratios, considered. So he didn't even look at that. So if you had a room that had two dimensions that were the same, not, not even in the mix. So, and, and that's the way I respond to most of you when you send that in. So very, very serious to have two dimensions of the same. So not tolerated there, unless, you know, you had five modes in a one-third octave band. Well, I think as time has gone on, this is an older way of looking at things that 
we're just going to say that modal coincidences are not tolerated. So if you have two dimensions the same, we're going to have to change that physically by adding a wall to, to your room or shortening a dimension. So what is the Bonella graph? It, it's a way to look at a room size that you're considering that you already have, plug it into the formula, and uh, we're going to show you that in the graphic, and then uh, you'll be able to uh, see where your room fits into that formula and know that that's a good start. We also have to consider pressure in the room, usage, and things like that. But in graphic one, you see the Bonella graph, and you can use your uh, room that you have right now and plug it into that graph. And then also realize that um, anything below this dimension that I'm going to give you right now, uh, we have to look at it uh, differently. So a good break point for room dimensions is 17 foot wide, 11 foot tall, 10, 11 foot tall, and 23 foot long. So anything below that, if your room size is below that, we're going to have to uh, treat low frequency pressure differently than if it is above that and a little bit larger, which will concentrate on reverberation times. So use the Bonella graph, plug your uh, room dimensions in it, and then look at the 17, 10, 23 as a break point and realize that if your room is below that in size, our emphasis is going to really have to be on the low end, and anything above that size, it'll have to be on the uh, higher end. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.